Hello you absolute legends and welcome back to creating. This right here is an optical mouse. And I know what the younger ones in my audience are thinking. That's just a mouse fam, don't act all fancy by throwing around words like optical. And to them I'd say, <sighs> there are the kinds of computer mice. Though not in vogue these days, we had mechanical mice when I was a kid. And much like this guy over here, mice used to have balls. The reason I stress on the word optical is because that the optical sensor is the only thing we need today. You've already seen in the intro what this thing does. And this video is about how you can possibly make one for yourself. And I know it's very ugly, but it does the job. And that's how my girlfriend introduced me to her parents. And now, let's get on and see how an optical mouse actually works, where I'd explain to you something that I just learned from the internet 15 minutes ago and pretend to be smart. But before that, I'd remind you, as always, that I work hard on these videos. In an effort to bring you original content, I do everything from the graphics to the animation to the programming and even the music myself. So if you've been enjoying my content, please hit the like button for the algorithm and subscribe to not miss out future content. At its core, an optical mouse sensor is just a very, very low resolution monochrome digital camera. The resolution typically lies in the range of 16 by 16 to 30 by 30 pixels. To put that into context, this is 30 by 30 pixels compared to one megapixel. A typical cell phone camera these days is above 15 megapixels. What is more important than that though, is that since the resolution is so low, it can process things at around 1500 frames per second, which means it takes 1500 pictures of the surface every second. It compares one frame to the previous frame to decipher in which direction and how far the mouse has moved. And it does so 1500 times in a second which is almost the same frequency with which you check your phone after texting your crush. This is our optical sensor. And represented here is what the sensor actually sees. Of course, it's just silicon, so all this information is actually numbers. But here they have been represented by different shades of gray. 16 by 16 is 256 and not 50. Just saying. So, if you think as a human being for a moment, how would you keep track of your own movement? Since this lens cap moved to the left, you know that the camera moved towards the right. For us, it's very instinctive. For an electronic device, all this has to be logic written in forms of algorithms and mathematics. When the sensor moves, it would compare the new image with the old image and figure out in which direction and how far it has moved. Since I decided to be clever in this project, this is also where the projects would have to diverge for all of us. You can get a brand new optical sensor and use it. I had a bunch of mice lying around which were deemed unfit for use for one reason or another. And I had this really old PS2 mouse that I opened up in an effort to salvage the sensor. And it was a really common and well documented sensor as well. But I could not get it to power on. The sensor was probably just busted. So most of the people in my audience either wouldn't know or wouldn't remember what a PS2 port is. If you do, leave a like and holler at me in the comments. The next mouse I opened was a delight. It had a very well labeled PCB. To a tinkerer, that is the stuff dreams are made of. I would really not have to do much. I wouldn't even need to desolder the sensor from the PCB because I'd just remove the USB cable, cut out the parts of the PCB I don't need and solder everything directly to the clearly labeled solder joints. I'd use these USB solder joints and solder them directly onto my microcontroller and read the data directly from the USB. Initially, I had intended to use any SP32 for my project. It's a cheap microcontroller with built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. But honestly, I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get it to read USB input. I have to do these projects in a rush and I have to finish a project in about 12 days so that I can get the video out in 15. And I'm way past my deadlines on this one because something or the other just kept popping up. As a matter of fact, I've been dealing with the flu for the last three days. I'm taking steam and wiping my nose in between the takes. Don't worry though, I'm fully vaccinated and isolating myself. But a good project does take time. I had to think of it, gather the parts, do the electronics, which I'm admittedly not too good at, do the Android app, and then design and 3D print the housing. 
I did not waste my time trying to get an ESP32 to work and just went with a Raspberry Pi Zero W instead. It's a much more expensive device, but it has a USB port where I can just solder the USB pins of my PCB. I got a cheap 16x2 LCD screen to use as a display and all was going great when I decided to start working on my Android app. And immediately I hit a huge roadblock. Bluetooth. I hate Bluetooth. It makes me cry. As someone who takes listening to music seriously, I already partially hated it just because it has never been as convenient as just plugging into a headphone jack, neither as high quality. As a programmer though, there's just no clarity as to what you have to do. There are so many different standards and different types, Bluetooth 4, Bluetooth 5, Bluetooth low energy. And oh. you know how people say that tactile learners, they need to do to learn? Yeah, N not me. I'm a very vanilla kind of learner. I gotta read or hear someone explain things to me very clearly or I just can't do any of it and unfortunately, I couldn't find any such good guides for Bluetooth and I did not have the time to read the entire manual. I wasted about 4 days trying to figure this mess out and honestly, I could not. Socket programming is simple. Connect to the same network, you'd be assigned some sort of an address, use it for communication. Not so with Bluetooth. But I did manage something. I managed to get it to work without really understanding what I did. And that's basically every programmer ever. But yeah. So I went ahead and developed the app in React Native. The code is uploaded to GitHub and the link is in the description as always. The last thing remaining was a housing. And honestly, I had 24 hours to print a housing, put everything together, shoot the A roll and shoot the B roll. So I committed one of the biggest sins in my opinion. I'm probably going to hell. I decided I'd not care about the aesthetics. I'd just design the most basic housing, glue everything together and call it a day. The usage of the device is fairly simple. There is a button on either side. One is here and there's another one on the other side. So when you first switch it on, it would ask if you'd like to pair it to Bluetooth, which I would not at the moment, so I'd just do no. Connect to Bluetooth, again I'd do no. And then it'll tell you that it's not connected. So now you're on the main screen of the device. If you hold down this button and drag it on a surface, it would tell you how far the device has been dragged. The same button, if you tap it twice, you can change the units with it. Otherwise, if you press this button, you can change the mode. Currently, it's in the XY mode. That means it would measure just the distance, how far it has been dragged, and it would pay no attention to the direction in which it's being dragged. Otherwise, if I put it in X mode, now it would tell me how far it has been dragged only in the X direction. It would ignore any of my Y movements. Similarly, there is a Y mode, and if you press both buttons together, it would be reset back to zero. If you've seen my previous videos, they are generally more in depth. I give detailed instructions, the code, the STL files, but because of a lack of time, I just cannot do it with this one. I have uploaded the code for the Android app and also the code that's running on my device, but that's all I can do at the moment. I even had plans for a ribbon attachment for this measuring device that would work much like a normal run-of-the-mill measuring tape, but I just ran out of time. If you'd like me to make a more detailed video, hit the like button and tell me in the comments. If this video gets a good response, I'd definitely make a follow-up. I have also started a Patreon if you'd like to watch me do more such projects and improve on this particular project, you can support me there. But for now, I'd have to put a pin in it. That being said, feel free to reach out to me if you have any ideas or problems. And this is my Instagram handle. And that's that. So. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, the other one is fine. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. And until next time, just keep building.